Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video we are going to look at some basic operations that we can use uh, for strings and we're also going to look at some special characters that we can put inside of our strings. So let's get started. Defining a string is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. We already know how to do this. Like if I wanted spam to be uh, some string like this is a string and I start it with a single quote and I end it with a single quote and I'll hit enter and you'll see that now spam is a variable in memory it's of type string and it's containing uh, this string this is a string so it starts with a single quote and ends with a single quote and you might ask the question though what if we want a string to contain a single quote or an apostrophe right that character and this is where we would run into some trouble like uh, if I wanted the string Marty's cat is named Roxy. Marty's cat is named Roxy. You see, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have an error here. You can already tell because the the uh, the coloring of my string is off. I'll hit enter, and you'll see we get we get an error syntax error invalid syntax. And uh, the reason is that uh, if we look at the command, uh, this Python thinks that we're ending the string right there right where that's we we started with a single quote and then there's our next single quote and so it, it sees the string marty but then uh, s cat is named roxy it doesn't know what to do with that there are there are two ways of handling this and the first is with uh, double quotes it turns out that the double quote does everything that the single quote does so I can, you know, everything that I've said about the single quote will apply with the double quote. For example, if we go to the, uh, the first thing that we did up here, this is a string, I could do that with the double quote, no problem, right? There it is, it's in memory, this is a string. Now the reason I would want to use double quotes here is um, for, the, for the next example, it's Marty's cat, oops, excuse me, Marty's cat is named Roxy. So you see, because I started this, the, uh, the string with a double quote, Python is looking for the double quote to, to recognize the end of the string. So now it sees the single quote as just being a character, and it knows that that's not the end. So I'll hit enter here, and you'll see now that command goes through, and in memory is Marty's cat is named Roxy. I could print it if I wanted to print spam like that, and you'll see Marty's cat is named Roxy. So that's great. I, I have that uh, string in memory. The other way of doing it is an important way. I'm going to clear this for a second. And it's going to use just single quotes, but it's going to use what's called an escape character. And I'm going to try uh, spam equals, and then um, I'm, going to, I'm going to try Marty's cat is named Roxy. But I'm going to do something special for this apostrophe here. I'm going to tell it that no, that's actually an apostrophe. I want to escape out of the uh, functionality of the apostrophe with a backslash. So I'm going to put a backslash in front of the apostrophe, and that tells that's like a special character. And it's called an escape character. And that's going to say uh, to Python to do something different. And in this case, it's going to recognize that as just being an apostrophe. So if I hit enter, you'll see that command goes through, and I can print print spam. And there it is, Marty's cat is named Roxy, no problem there. So that's an escape character, and even though it's two characters, technically, uh, we refer to this as just being one character, the escape character, or um, uh, the apostrophe escape character, the single quote escape character. And there are other escape characters that you should be aware of, and I'm just going to list them over here in my notes. Uh, so, so backslash apostrophe is one. And then another one is actually backslash double apostrophe is how we would print or how we would store actually a double apostrophe in our string. And, uh, and another one is backslash T is the, uh, the tab character. So this one's interesting. If I, want, if I said something like spam equals, and if I actually wanted like a tab in my string, I could say Marty's. Marty's cat is, and then maybe I'll, I'll put a tab here with a backslash T named Roxy. I'll store that. And you'll see in the variable explorer, I have this big gap here, which is the tab. And if I print spam, then you'll see, uh, oh, I, I forgot the, uh, forgot the apostrophe 
in my definition of spam. So let me do that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now if I print spam, you'll see that I've got the tab command or the tab character there is stored in my string. So just using the uh, the backslash, which is is above the enter key. I can use these fancy escape characters. And one neat thing, and I'm just going to define spam as being, how about uh, one, then tab, and then two, is that that's, that tab character is actually, um, you know, stored in there, uh, and I can, I can get that uh, character. Notice if I if I type length of spam, it returns three. So one is a character, the tab is a character, and then two is a character. So that means that I can access that. I can say spam zero is one, right? And spam of one is the tab character, that escape character, right? So that it gives me back, it returns back the backslash T, which is that escape character for the tab. Another uh, escape character is uh, backslash n which is useful this is the new line character so let me clear this here in the console and uh, let me define something like marty's backslash apostrophe s cat is and then I'm going to say backslash n that's going to give me a new line like a carriage return and then I'm going to type named roxy and uh, if I print spam now, you'll see Marty's cat is, and then new line named Roxy. So that's how we can print new lines, backslash n. Um, because if I said something like spam equals Marty's cat is, and then I hit, and then if I hit enter, like for a new line, right? Uh, you'll see enter means to put the command through. Entered will not just give me a new line like a carriage return like you're used to when you're typing in your word processor. So to actually get that new line, I need a backslash n. So that's that's interesting too. And then you might ask, well, then how do I get a backslash? And that would be backslash backslash. That escapes the backslash. So this will, this will actually give us a backslash. And so we can see that by, by defining some variable spam. And we can say um, backslash, backslash, this is a backslash. Something like that. And then maybe backslash, backslash. And if I hit enter, it, the command goes through. And if I print spam, bam, I've got one backslash because the first one is to escape the functionality of the backslash. And then, then it prints the backslash, this is a backslash. All right. So you see how these are some interesting characters that we can introduce into our strings. One thing that you should uh, be familiar with is that the R in front of a string is for raw. It's, it's to tell Python that we're going to have a raw string. And this, this means like to take it literally. Liter literally. There we go. So for example, if I if I took the same function uh, the same command that I just gave it but I put an R in front of it okay and then I hit enter now if I print spam you'll see two backslashes it took literally what I typed which is two backslashes this is a backslash or for a, another example if I said uh, R then I entered my string Marty backslash apostrophe s cat is named or um, how about uh, new line named Roxy and if I stored that and if I printed spam you see what gets stored in spam it's it's literally what I typed so Marty backslash apostrophe s cat is backslash n named Roxy. So the R stands for raw. This is a raw string. You can think of it as just taking it very literally whatever you type. Okay, I'm going to clear this, give myself some space. And then the next thing that you should be aware of is that the, uh, the, single, uh, the triple single quotes, triple single quotes, or um, the triple double quotes, 
uh, can be used for multi multi line uh, strings. So if you don't like the backslash n, your your other option is to use the triple quotes. So uh, let me give you an example. Let's say spam equals, um, and then we'll say dear Amanda. And uh, actually, I'm going to put triple quotes here, triple triple quotes there. Dear Amanda. And then uh, I'll hit enter, and you see that uh, the command didn't go through yet. It's waiting for more more commands. I'm going to hit enter again. It's still waiting. Dear Amanda, um, uh, Marty's cat is named Roxy. And then I'll hit enter. It's still waiting. And then I'll hit enter again. Still waiting. I'll type sincerely. Enter. Still waiting. Tessa. And then I'll end it with triple quotes. Bam. And it goes through. And the reason it's waiting, it's waiting for the triple quotes, and it's picking up those new line characters as I as I hit enter. So if I print spam now, you will see, Dear Amanda, Marty's cat is named Roxy. Sincerely, Tessa. It picked up my new line characters. So this is another way of getting those new lines using the triple quotes. Here I used triple single quotes. You could also use triple double quotes. And just to be clear, uh, this would be equivalent to spam equals single quote uh, if I just want to use single quotes dear Amanda and then backslash n for one new line backslash n for another new line Marty backslash apostrophe s cat is named Roxy period then backslash n backslash n for you know two new lines sincerely backslash n Tessa and then I'll hit enter there. Spam goes through. And if I print spam, there it is, the same thing. So backslash n or your triple quotes can pick up those, uh, those new lines. And then finally, we can also use the triple quotes or the triple double quotes for multi-line comments, which could be useful like at the top of your program. So if you're, if you're going to comment your program with a lot of uh, comments especially at the beginning like like this uh, function does some great things by doing blah 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 um, and blah 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 like this so this would this is a three line comment right it goes on for three lines and each time uh, we have to use the you know the comment operator, which is the hashtag or the the, the pound sign uh, on each line, right? You could do that, or you could do, use triple quotes. So you could say something like triple, triple, triple quote like this. This function does some great things by, and then we don't have to do anything else. Um, doing blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah and then triple quote to end the, the comment. So we could we could comment like this. And this way, if you have a long comment that spans many lines, you don't have to do anything at the beginning of each line. You just have to do something at the beginning of your comment, the triple quote, and the end of your comment. If you do this, just keep in mind that the color, though, is different for some reason um, than the color of a normal comment right the one in my example here my my comments are gray and then when I do this triple comment uh, the comment is green all right so that's all I wanted to cover in this video and in the next video we're going to look at some more operations that we can do with strings thank you I'll see you then